So my name is Ben. Uh, my node name is uh, KO6 CNT base. And then this guy is Fire Car Tracker. Those are, and then you'll find Fire under some other names uh, for my node names. Uh, my Discord username is RCGB. So that's kind of the format I'm gonna, we're going to do intros. Uh, also, yeah, call sign KO6 CNT. So name, uh, <laughs> node name, call sign, Discord name, IP address, social security number. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll hold this around since I'm the one mobile. Uh, I'm John Shikotic and I. Um, all of my nodes are uh, SG9 something or other. Uh, most of them are in the pile on the back over there. Wait a second, I get the microphone. Yeah. Uh, my name is JM. Uh, you might know me online as MC Hamster. Um, I've been with Meshcastic for just a little bit here. Uh, my nodes are all named um, in alphabetical order. But something involving food or fruit. So apples, bananas, carrots. So if you do see that, those are me. Um, but my main node is actually just called MC Hatcher. Very nice and simple there. What was the other thing? Oh, oh yes. Uh, uh, W-O-0 and T-Z. Boots, boots, boots. <laughs> no, 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 boots and pants. <laughs> so I'm Jim, N9J I M, and uh, the nodes are Jim H and Jim M. So Jim Mobile is the one that you'll probably hear the most with me making any noise on, going around the Bay Area, trying to see what propagation we have, sending all kinds of little text messages like 280 and 85. And then some people, some people respond with, that's 365. <laughs> my notes are uh, P120, no, P117 I started with, I think I'm up to P123. Right now, this is it, uh, the P is for Papa Echo 1, Papa Unifor Yankee, which is a Dutch call sign. And I just got my general license here to show my uh, whiskey sticks, probably as well. Yeah. Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm a complete newbie. I do have a um, spastic TV, and I forgot to do how to make it work. So I don't know any of names, and um, I'm just, um, just trying to pick up from all the, what's happening, like, what's it all about, and I had an interest in uh, uh, Mac computers like Raspberry Pi and uh, HP32, and what you know, I'm going to pursue to connect other devices and sensors and actuators. The radios and then use the uh, low, low bandwidth at long distance. And I go 14 miles from my site uh, across the valley uh, from uh, over the east uh, San Jose to Los Angeles. Hey, well, I, I guess I'm in the, even more of a newbie because I don't even know what all my notes yet. Uh, but uh, hi, I'm Alan. Uh, I, uh, my call sign is uh, AK6AD. Um, that's my amateur radio call sign. It's also my uh, user name on that, or put my display on name on the uh, Discord. And, um, yeah. I'm Josiah. You can find me in Discord as a fishy JK, and all my nodes are in. JK something, so I want a new work right now, it's just NWJK. I try to get out, but I don't get much service right now, I'm blocked by a bunch of townhouses, so you may hear me, but I won't be able to hear you. Hey everyone, my name is Alberto, and uh, my call sign name is Armwood44. I don't know the name of this one, so but I'm still learning as well. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, I think that's everyone. I yeah. think, is, is everyone that amateur, amateur radio certified? No? Okay. Uh, then we're mostly a bunch of nerds. <laughs> we're still nerds. Uh, I mean, we're all, yeah, we're all radio nerds. Yeah, so uh, a little bit about the growth of the Barrier Mesh. So it's been crazy the past, like, I think, year. Uh, I think it was like 50 a year ago. And now it's like 500, including Sacramento. You cropped me out. <laughs> uh, I crop. Yeah, Sh Shikata, I, I cropped him. Uh, I cropped out John out of there uh, on purpose. But uh, <laughs> this count includes you, the 500. Uh, yeah, I think we beat out SoCal. 
uh, but we didn't beat them out on Discord. Uh, Southern California has like 700, and we have 530 people in our Discord. So it's like more nodes, but less people in our Discord. Uh, so we still have to beat them on that. Uh, but I think we do also beat them in channel utilization, which is fun. Uh, and node per person ratio? Uh, what? The node per person ratio. Node per person. Oh. I don't have that measurement. I mean, Discord users to nodes is about one to one. But the reality is, is I think there's a lot of people like myself who have a dozen nodes that tip the scale, so. When you showed the growth of the Bay Area Mesh there, you said there's 500, but there are a lot fewer than 500 dots there, some of which are green. Oh, uh, so what happens is when you zoom out on this, it just clumps all together, so like, uh, there's, it's counting Sacramento and uh, North oh, Bay, like up there, uh, and even down here in Monterey. So it's like the Monterey mesh and Sacramento are in that count, uh, but we technically don't have a link to them. Even though I think if we put a repeater, we can link up with Monterey quite easily. If it hasn't been done yet. Like a repeater here would link us with Monterey. Uh, yeah, so. The growth is quite crazy. I would get a graph, but uh, I couldn't get a hold of the historical data. I think I had one at the para meeting before, but. What did the green dots denote? Oh, so green, green dots are gateways. So this is the map generated through MQTT. So this is the server uh, that we're running that's pulling all the packets, and then the map is just putting them out there, all the data that was received. Uh, actually, 500, that's actually, it's probably even more than that, because these are only nodes that are on the map. So if there's stuff that's not recording positions, then it's not going to be in that count. Uh, so uh, recently, actually, we had a demo of Meshtastic. It was the first time Meshtastic was officially demoed at a convention. We demoed it at open source. And it was me, uh, John, JM, and uh, yeah, and we basically were able to recruit a ton of more tech enthusiasts into Meshtastic, uh, a lot of whom were actually not from California, like they flew into uh, open source convention, and we get to talk to them. Uh, that's... Uh, Prusa, I forgot what his name is, but J Joseph Prusa. Joseph Prusa, the guy who owns Prusa, checking out the notes. And I think, yeah, Meshtastic was on the Prusa podcast two years ago, I think. And he just came in because he saw us. Quite cool. Uh, Don't wait, I got one more. Also, if you saw Jeff Gearling. Um, did a quick bit on YouTube with some Meshtastic nodes. You can thank these two for convincing him to check it out. Yeah, I got, all, I got a selfie with Jeff Gearling. Pretty cool guy. Yeah, I saw him at the convention. I didn't remember his name. I just said, oh, that's the Raspberry Pi guy to my friend. <laughs> and then he was like, and I told him about Meshtastic and you should check out our booth. And he was like, oh, 10 of my ham friends were telling me I got to check it out. Uh, and that was kind of the reoccurring theme at our booth, like a ton of people were like, oh, someone told me about Meshtastic, but I couldn't get into it because I don't have time. Uh, and they wanted to learn more because they just heard about it and they didn't actually know what it was. Right. Yeah, this is a bit of a cool section I made here. So balloon launches with Meshtastic. So recent, uh, I think it was like three months ago, but I got... I went with Bo with the uh, SF HAB organization, which does high altitude balloons in the SF Bay area. And I made a payload for one of their high altitude balloons. This was what I came up with. It was a health tech tracker uh, with some batteries attached to it uh, and just a stock antenna. Uh, we did have a ton of hardware issues when I got there. Uh, it turns out that uh, I actually don't know what happened, but the way it connected the battery to the node, something went wrong. 
and uh, we had to cut all the wires off and someone had like a US uh, USB cable that we sacrificed and then on the field we had to do some soldering of that dead USB cable to pick up the battery too. Uh, and it, uh, we got like I think 11 position packets from that. Uh, I don't quite off the top of my head remember the height that it stopped the last position packet but we did get the last position packet was gated uh, the MQTT's uh, server, the node that uploaded it to the server was in Sacramento, which was, it was like a 140 mile contact from a balloon. Uh, I'm pretty sure the issue that stopped it from getting received was maybe the antenna. That was my guess, but uh, we're actually going to have some more balloon launches planned. Uh, so when SF Hab has another balloon launch, we'll probably, I'll probably do another payload. And most notably, uh, if anyone knows no Noise Bridge, uh, they're a hacker space in San Francisco. And I did a presentation there uh, about my success with the Meshtastic payload. And I basically told them to do the same. So now they're going to, on their next balloon launch, they're going to also put a payload. And they're also going to put a repeater payload. So we can have increased network range here. Yep, uh, so repeaters, uh, we don't have a lot of them, and but we do have some notable ones like Diablo, which I think got taken down like three times, and this is like the fourth attempt. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and the North Bay provides really, really good coverage, uh, but they were having some issues, and this is like the final iteration like this is the uh cavity filter uh g2 raspberry pi like the top of the line mesh tastic stuff you can go with uh so they're going to be putting that up do you know when uh that's going to be put up which, which one that one uh, oh diablo yeah there uh the he's got it built diablo was this gonna be diablo 3 or diablo 4 um, which replaces Diablo 2. Uh, he said it was in the next couple of weeks, but if you follow along in the repeaters channel on Discord, you will see the updates. Uh, I believe it's Travis's posting. Um, but Diablo, for those who remember, the original Diablo, we got really good connectivity. We got messages from Petaluma to Turlock, which is 160 kilometers with one hop, um, which was really impressive. Uh, Diablo 2 is on a building, so its pickup is not nearly as good. I'm in Walnut Creek, I can see the North Peak, it's like nine miles from me, I can't get any messages to it. Um, but uh, this new setup uh, proves to be quite good, and this will be what connects uh, the Bay of Mesh back to Sacramento. We basically take over Sac Mesh, and they hate it, just like us buying up their houses. So we're taking over their mesh, and I do not love it. Um, but uh, the same gentleman who put this up uh, has put up nodes on Mount Baca too. Um, and so those are also, if you are headed through the uh, 680, 80, um, North Bay, Northeast, um, Bacchanal area, uh, you will often pass through the coverage of that unit on Mount Baca. Yeah, uh, I quite selfishly included a, uh, a picture of a repeater that I had put up. So this is a solar node uh, near Foothills. Uh, I call it the Foothills router. If you've seen it on the mesh or I talked about it, uh, it provides coverage of most of uh, the West. Uh, so like the peninsula, I guess. Uh, I don't actually see it directly from my house. Uh, but I know it does hook up a lot of stuff. I remember I was playing around with it and I had it set up in router mode and then I turned it to client mode. And then that, like the moment I turned it to client mode, everyone was like, why is the mesh doing so poorly? And it might have been some, some other issue, but I just decided the next week to put it back to router. So it's in router. It's 
you can barely see it because it's I made it only report itself like every three hours because I don't want it uh, adding traffic to the mesh. Uh, but also the thing with repeaters is I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, my plan, my ideas for switching frequencies and modem presets because uh, of the insane traffic that we're getting. So uh, going forward, uh, if the testing goes well, because we're first going to have to test the new frequencies, if the testing goes well, then probably most repeaters should be switched to uh, uh, the preset that we're going to be using. And uh, if you have FOMO, then you can have two nodes on the repeater, one's long fast and one's uh, whatever you decide on, and the long fast one would be like switch to whatever we decide on. I'm kind of being vague because we still need to do some testing. Uh, or actually, one thing. Sorry, I just want to correct myself. To be, uh, the VACA unit and Diablo unit were Trevor KG six MDW. Um, I wanted to credit the right person for that. Sorry. I'm gonna take like a. 20 to 30 minute break here. Uh, there's pizza back there, and uh, just you can converse. All right. Talks amongst yourselves. <laughs>